I have a confession this morning. What better place for a confession, right? When I was younger, I served nine years. I had a sentence to serve a term of nine years. It's nine years, sometimes difficult, sometimes a struggle. It wasn't easy, those nine years. But I served them. I served out the full sentence. And the people that ran the facility, they were sometimes very demanding. Discipline, hard, sometimes very stressful. But looking back, looking back on those nine years, those nine years of Catholic school <laughs> were a wonderful gift for me now and hopefully for all eternity. Because the religious sisters Filippini and the priests that we had taught us something very important, and I hear it today in Scripture, and that's what I'd like to share. They taught us that we were chosen by God and chosen for God. Chosen by God and chosen for God. They would choose us to do all kinds of things. They would choose us to go help at the Golden Agers, which was the senior citizens, and we get all nervous and worried and, and, and just be all stressed. And then they would tell us, don't worry, go. Go out there. That's what you're chosen to do. They would choose us to go out and help the needy, those who needed some type of assistance, and we would get nervous again. We didn't know what we were doing, and the sisters would say beautifully, don't worry, you have Jesus. You'll be fine, go out. The most stressful thing they ever chose us to do was to read at Mass. You know how stressful it can be to speak in front of large groups of people just asking for a friend? It can be stressful. But they told us, that's what you were chosen for. You were chosen not to just have your faith, but to live it. Live it out in the world but you were chosen by God. We heard that in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And by the way, it's not just to the Ephesians, it's for us as well. What's St. Paul say? When were we chosen? Not just when we were born, not just when God knitted us in our, in our mother's wounds. God chose us before the foundation of the world, before anything that was anything before everything that was everything. We, you and I, all of us, were chosen by God. And what's St. Paul say? We're chosen by God for what? To glorify Him. To glorify Him into the world. That's why we were chosen. That's what we've been chosen for. But how many times do we think that's not us. That's not me. I'm good right where I'm at. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's not what we were chosen for. Look in the first reading. Amos tells it, right? God chose him like he chose us. And what's Amos say? Not me. I'm just a shepherd. Not me. I'm just a fruit picker. God said, no. Get out there. Go. Go forth into the world. That's what you were chosen for. He said, I'm not a prophet. I don't prophesy. Yeah, yeah, you are. Go do it. I don't know about you, but it's a little ironic for me in my situation. We're always told never to speak religion. Never speak religion out. It's the worst advice we could have ever received. Not only should we speak religion, we have to live it. That's what we've been chosen for, to live our faith out into the world. That's our calling. Since the time we were baptized as priests, prophets, and kings, 
to go forth into the world with our faith. But we doubt. And we have obstacles. The world does not want us to do that. But that's what we've been chosen for. How many times do we think we don't know enough? It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, it's stressful, whatever it is. How do you think the apostles felt in the gospel? They were feeling pretty good about themselves. They knew they were chosen, right? And they'd be getting real close with Jesus, growing with Jesus. And what's Jesus say to them in the, in the gospel today? Go. Go out there. Do what I do. You don't need your money bag. You don't need a sack. You don't need a second tunic. Leave behind your cell phones and your magic bands. Go out there into the world and live the faith. And they probably thought, we saw him do this. How can we do this? And Jesus said to them, you can do it. You don't need any of that stuff because you have me. You have all you need to do what I do out there because you have me. Do you see it? That was their lesson. That's our lesson. Our lesson is that we have Jesus Christ with us, present. And we have to live him out there. We have him in our prayer life, not just in the beautiful daily prayers that we say and pray, but when we listen in our prayer life, in our spiritual life, we'll actually hear and find our Redeemer present, giving us the faith and the power to go forth into the world and to live him. We have Jesus in sacred scripture. That, that's not just ancient text. Those are not words on a page. That is God, the God of the universe. The gospel is God. And we're called not to just hear it and read it. We've been chosen for the purpose to live the gospel in the world. That's what we've been chosen for. We have Jesus present with us in the sacraments, none greater than Holy Eucharist. We're the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God of the universe, who remember, chose us before he made everything present here. We're to live it out there. That's what we've been chosen for. The Eucharist doesn't end here. The Eucharist doesn't end when we receive him. The Eucharist doesn't end when we're back in our pews. And God have mercy on us if the Eucharist ends when we leave this beautiful and solemn basilica. Eucharist means we live Jesus in the world. We do what Jesus does and did with our lives in the world. That's the key, folks. That's what we're chosen for. And it's the little things. It's not some great act or some great miracles. It's the little things. It's how we go forth and do what we've been chosen for. You drive out the evil spirit of greed and envy with humility and love. You drive out the evil spirit that breaks families and friendships apart by forgiving the way God does. You heal people the way Jesus healed people when you live a life of love. Even those that maybe don't believe what we believe, look like we do, or share anything in common, but we love them unconditionally like God loves us, that's how we live out there what we've been chosen for.
There's a Eucharistic Congress starting this week trying to revive. And I hope the love, my prayer is the love of the Eucharist catches fire around this country. But my prayer is twofold. My prayer is that the fire of recognizing Jesus in the Eucharist ignites. And the second part is that I pray that Jesus ignites and the Eucharist goes forth once we recognize him so that we live him in the world and others recognize Jesus in us. My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we have indeed been chosen by God. Let us never forget that. And let us never forget that we've been chosen for God and live it with our lives. May each of you know his love today, tomorrow, and forever.